Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new episode of NASCAR Heat for Career Moto. Hope you're all having a great day. Today we go to one of my favorite racetracks in all of motorsports in general, Bristol Motor Speedway, a track that I truly love racing at, uh, especially here in NASCAR Heat 4. Uh, so hopefully we can have some strong runs today, but in the Xfinity Series I actually was in the car for this race specifically there as we went down through turn 1. I didn't have a very good qualifying effort, which was a little bit unfortunate. But we did have a pretty good start to this race, and I would be able to move my way forwards uh, as the time went on there. There, as you see me making contact with the 21 there, Kaz well as it went down into these next few corners. But continuing to move forwards uh, through the field as they went down the back straightaway, as we came through to the final lap, though, down the back straightaway once again for the final time as I went down into turn three, putting the pressure on Cole Custer there in the double zero, but not quite enough as we would exit turn four. We would at least get up through to a solid finish here of P6, so I was pretty happy with that with Justin Allgaier winning. So we cut straight through now towards Cup Series uh, qualifying for uh, Bristol Motor Speedway. A lot of just uh, high expectations coming into this one. Now as we go down the back straightaway into turns three and turns four. Running the Aeros paint scheme for this race as we exit turn four. It was a pretty fast lap as we cross the line right, to go with a 15.717 and go P8 here at Bristol. So we certainly have some speed and hopefully we can show that today here at Bristol Motor Speedway with uh, the 11 of Denny Hamlin on the pole. Welcome to Bristol Motor Speedway for the Food City 500. This half mile concrete oval is famous for its high banking and all of the beating and banging that goes on out there. But the only thing that matters to these drivers is winning this race. All right, there you have it from Rick Allen as we're ready to go green here for the Food City 500 at Bristol Motor Speedway. Kislowski had an engine change after qualifying, so he is sent to the back. Denny Hamlin, the pole winner, had an unapproved body modification during qualifying, so he is starting at the back, and Ty Dillon gave up qualifying position for new tires, so we actually gained two positions due to Hamlin and Kislowski being sent to the back of the field as we're ready to go green here at Bristol Motor Speedway. It's Truex and Harvick on the front row as the green flag is out, and we are underway at Bristol Motor Speedway behind the two Bush brothers of Kyle and Kurt Busch. Third and fourth as we go down into turns one and turns two for the first time here at Bristol exiting turn two side by side with our teammate of Clint Boyer as we go down into turn three behind Kurt Busch putting a little bit of pressure on him almost making the three wide up the middle we make contact with Boyer and the two in front of us make contact as we go down into turns one. So a bit of a... Uh, Rocky start there on that opening lap here in Bristol as we exit turn two, trying to put the pressure on Kurt Busch in that one car. Now as we come through turn three, though, looking to the inside of Kurt as we exit turn four, we hand the momentum there on the exit of the corner, but as we came through on lap three, heading down into turns three, back up the inside now of Kurt Busch as we exit turn four, trying to get up in front of him, but can't quite do it as he continues to battle on my outside as we go down into turns one, though, we just about clear him, but he battles back again as we exit turn two, heading down this back straightaway. Kyle Busch at this point to take the, the, the lead from Martin Truex Jr., so he leads out of turn four, crossing the line, but we clear Kurt Busch and take over that sixth position now as we can do on lap six now putting the pressure on two of our teammates of Clint Boyer and Kevin Harvick as we exit turn two using this outside lane it, the outside was working really well on this opening run here at Bristol as we exit turn four on the outside of Clint Boyer as we cross the line we would also be able to get past him and Kevin Harvick so we would move up to P4 as we came to 19 to go here as we came through turns one and two Joey Logano now leading the way at this point, but the caution would come out and we would get ready for a restart. It was David Reagan who brought out the yellow flag. So we would get right back into the action now as the green flag is back out. Joey Logano and Kyle Busch lead the way as we go down into turns one and it turns two. Martin Truex Jr., a former uh, NASCAR Heat 3 rival on our inside for the moment. There's Kevin Harvick now looks to my inside. Now in the back straight away into turns three. Logano clear for the lead as Truex battles side by side with his teammate of Kyle Busch as we actually got sideways there as we go down into turns one. Harvick right behind us going for a little bit of a slide through the center of the corner and he hangs on to it thankfully as we go down the back straight away towards turn three trying to put the pressure on Kyle Busch and Martin Truex Jr. who's trying to pass Joey Logano for the lead but I didn't quite have much for them as Kyle Busch he would actually pass both Truex and Logano and take the lead back Logano drops the second Truex starting to lose connection with the front two drivers as went down into turn three and turn four at this point but now really just settling in as I was pushing hard trying to get to Martin Truex Jr. but as we come through to two to go in the stage just couldn't quite get to him we certainly weren't losing a lot of time by getting sideways out of the corner here approaching the final lap of this 
this first stage here at Bristol. Starting to lose some grip on this long run. Now as we exit turn four, crossing the line, the white flag for stage one is in the air. Now as we work our way through some lap traffic, closing in on the back of Parker Clickman. Sideways on the exit of turn two again, but we hang on to it now as we go down the back straightaway in to turns three and it turns four for the final time here in this first and opening stage. We're looking to the inside of Clickman, very sideways as we cross the line. Thankfully, we hang on to the car and get P4 in this first opening stage at Bristol. Certainly uh, very satisfied with that result, uh, but thankfully uh, we get the caution because the car was starting to slip away, so we would come to pit road uh, for two cans of fuel, four tires. Obviously, Martinsville, we were really loose. Texas, we were really tight. Today, it looks like we're starting to show a little bit more of a loose car, but we would pit, make a slight wedge adjustment, and come out P2 as the front runners all had some type of issue on pit road. David Reagan green. stays out and is leading. Be Kyle right Busch, Truex Logano, not even inside the top ten from the looks of it, so a very weird, uh, uh, something something weird happens, all we know, on pit road. And all of a sudden, we find ourselves taking the lead at the start of the second stage as we go down the back straightaway, passing David Reagan as we go down into turns three and turns four. So for the first time since Daytona, we find ourselves leading a race now in the Monster Energy Cup Series as we come through to lead that opening lap of this second stage here at Bristol Motor Speedway, coming through turns two at this point now down the back straightaway, thinking about, okay, do I want to save my tires as much as possible uh, while I have this lead or do I want to push and get as big of a lead as I can and I kind of uh, was leaning towards just getting as big of a lead as I could possibly get as I came through turns one and on the exit of turn two but at this point uh, now uh, a little bit later on on lap 11 of the second stage Clint Boyer our teammate had actually gone up to the second position and he was running that bottom lane and he had actually slowly started reeling me in as we come through on lap 16 dealing with lap traffic Kevin Harvick at the very back of the field somehow as we're going to make a pass on him going into turn three Matt to Benedetto as well. There you see HD Motorsports on the uh, left side of that car. I used to actually uh, get setups from him in NASCAR Heat 3, so definitely he was a good source for setups. I'm not sure if he's doing NASCAR Heat 4 setup videos, but if he is, that's certainly pretty cool now as we go down into turns 3 and turns 4. Clint Boyer putting some pressure on from behind as he's starting to reel in uh, myself now as we exit turn 2 at this point on lap 24 of 28 in the second stage. Boyer had actually started to get held up in some traffic, so that was a big advantage to myself as we exit turn four, approaching the final lap now in this second stage, looking for our first ever stage victory in the Cup Series as Boyer had been stuck behind some traffic as we exit turn two sideways down the back straightaway as we go down into turns three and turns four. I didn't want to really pressure Matt Tiff too much. I decided to just kind of let him hang on to the lead lap as we cross the line to get our first stage win of our Cup Series career. So very happy with that. We get a playoff point if we do make the playoffs. Obviously, our rookie season, no guarantee we're going to be a playoff driver in our rookie season. But as I said, Tyler Reddick not showing a lot of speed here at the short tracks. I mentioned that a few times this season. As we would come to the pit lane, though, we do have three seconds of repairs. And now we drop down to P5 for the start of this third and final stage. Clint Boyer, our teammate, leads with Alex Bowman joining him on the front row. Hamlin and his teammate of Jones on the second row. As we are joined by Jamie McMurray on the third row. As the green flag is out, 61 laps remain in this third and final stage at Bristol Motor Speedway. We're going to have to get aggressive as possible as we exit turn two. Looking to the inside of Jones, he gets clear as we go down into turn three, but we send it back up the inside, actually touching the apron, so making a bit of a mistake there as we went into the corner now on the inside of Alex Bowman as we cross the line, completing the opening lap of this third and final stage as we slide up in front of the 88 car of Alex Bowman. Now as we exit turn two, heading down this back straightaway up into the third position. Now as after the issues on pit road with Kyle Busch, Truex and Logano has just been myself and Boyer that have been the fastest cars on the track now as we hit 59 to go through turns one to turns two trying to put the pressure on Denny Hamlin the short run was really good for this outside lane as we went through into turns three closing right up on the back of Hamlin now as we came through on lap 69 giving Hamlin a little bit of a bump there as we exit turn two we get sideways and barely taps so well we look to the inside of Denny Hamlin as we go into turns we're going to pull a bit of a slide jump and he crosses us over through the center of the corner as we exit turn four great racing for the second position Hamlin still side Sideways, and we would take the position away from him now as we came to lap 72 out of turns. We're trying to reel in our teammate of Boyer, but we're not going to need to reel him in because the caution comes out again, and we would be getting ready to make another pit stop here. As I wasn't really sure fully what I wanted to do, but I felt like just uh, a little bit of feel and no tires was going to be the right call. I was hoping that was the right call, and sure enough, it was, thankfully.
So now we get ready for a restart once again here on the front row with our experienced teammate of Clint Boyer who's won multiple races here in the Cup Series. 50 laps remain on the south side row as we go through turns one and turns two. We need to be as aggressive as possible and get that lead as quick as possible and get away on this short run as we go through turns three, setting it up the outside of Boyer for a moment, but he gets clear as we exit turn four, getting a little bit sideways on the exit of the corner, but we would hang on now as we came through on lap 78. Still putting the pressure on Boyer, but he had actually moved up the track and taken my line and once he did that I actually got stuck behind him so I had to find other opportunities to get past him as you see me trying to get to the inside but he just had so much of a run as we make big contact there's on the exit of the corner thankfully we both hang on to it as go to, through turn three but now as we came through on lap 83 we come out of turns four with a big run on Clint Boyer now as we look to the inside as we cross the line as we go down into turns one we're going to use a slide job on our teammate of Clint Boyer and take the lead here with less than 50 laps to go at Bristol Motor Speedway as we look for our first ever Cup Series win as we go down into turns three and turns four. Now out of the corner, we had started to pull away from Clint Boyer. We got stuck behind him when he took our line, and that was really unfortunate because that's certainly going to maybe cost us a little bit later in this race. Now as we go down the back straightaway at this point on lap 90, still at this point pulling away just a little bit to Boyer, and now as it's well over a second and a half, maybe even two seconds, and as we came through now on lap 96, 30 laps to go here at Bristol Motor Speedway. 30 laps is not long at all now as we're starting to find ourselves some lap traffic as we go down into turns three and turns four almost hitting the 38 of David Reagan as we exit turn four and this was my biggest challenge was dealing with lap traffic they had a bad habit of taking my line away so I had to migrate to the bottom where the car was really weak Kozlowski had moved up into second place and through this lap traffic would allow him to close up right on the back of us as we exit turn two at this point approaching lap 100 so Keselowski putting on the pressure now as well as he has brought Chase Elliott into the party as well as we exit turn 4 trying my best to get away from them but we would continue to just struggle through lap traffic to where we got to Matt Tift who had also taken my line away as we go down into turn 1 and turns 2 nearly slamming into Tift we give him a little bit of a bump but that brings Keselowski right into the picture Tift hangs on to it as we go down the back straightaway into turn three. Kislowski putting on the pressures. We make a little bit of contact as we come through turns four, and Kislowski takes the lead as we're both sideways as we cross the line. 21 laps to go here in Bristol as the car is fading away. Lap traffic has costed us a major amount of time, and now as we came through out of turns two at this point, a lap one away, continuing to struggle with the handling of the cars. We went down into turns three and at turns four, and now Chase Elliott putting on the pressure. Now as we came through on lap 110 out of turns four, very sideways, and here we hit the as we cross the line, Elliot and Truex both go past as we go down into turns one and it turns two. 15 to go at this point as the car is fading away. Our dominant performance in this third and final stage has completely gone to waste now as we continue to battle though. We pass Elliot as they're starting to struggle themselves a little bit at this point with a lap traffic as we go through turns three and it turns four. Now passing Elliot to get back up into P3 as we're continuing to get sideways now as we go down at this point on lap 118. Elliot had gone back to my inside. He takes the lead as we exit turn two, sideways and into the wall we go again. Now as we're struggling so much with the handling of this car as we came through on lap 121, setting it up the inside there, the 37 of Chris Bush, and we hook bumpers, and we get to the apron, and spinning we go as we exit turn four. As this race has gone completely downhill, somehow the green flag actually stays out, and we drop down to P14 with just four laps to go here at Bristol, and we came through out of turn four, continuing to struggle really bad as we hit three laps to go at this point, and through turns one, and turns to behind our teammate of Boyer who was running second place earlier and once again we lose the back of the car and spinning down the back straight away we go and this time it's going to bring out a caution. caution. Our whole race has just been completely destroyed within these final 20 laps as Keselowski leads away. I would not pit for any repairs. We would just get ready to go back green. I was very uh, frustrated, obviously, at this point. Now as we come through, going back green in overtime, the car is very damaged, heavily damaged. You see it on the screen there. The right side was orange now as we go through turns one and turns two. We had a very promising car, and on the long run, it just continued to get looser and looser. But really, the main issue for us was the lap traffic taking my line away. That's really what costed me the most amount of time. I felt like if I could have just had a car that would run the bottom better, or if the AI would have just moved to the bottom, then we probably wouldn't have gotten into the situation as we're sliding out of turn two, down the back straightaway, into turns three for the final time. A great race gone to complete disaster as we exit turn four, hitting the wall again sideways as we cross the line to finish in the 16th position. Uh, so just, I could not believe what had happened at this point. I was extremely frustrated as Chase Elliott actually won the race, so he is now locked inside 
side of the playoffs, but I, I just couldn't believe it, to be honest with you guys. Now, as we're six in the points, I did not have any media quote. I didn't talk to the media after this race. I was so frustrated uh, with our result there, as we actually did lead the most laps, which was 50, so uh, at least that we, we did something good, but uh, we won a stage, and we got a playoff point, and it, we just couldn't put the final stage together. Like I said, uh, the lap traffic just kind of taking my line a lot, and the other AI behind us, like Kozlowski, Elliot, they were all running the bottom, and most of the lap cars were running in my lane instead of the bottom, which became uh, just a big hurdle to get around, and unfortunately, it costed us a lot of time, and it put us in a bad situation where we went from running so well to completely blowing it. Now, as in the next episode, though, it will be Richmond, a track that we usually struggle at NASCAR Heat 3. We did get some top 10s there, so hopefully we can uh, run strong there in that time, but uh, hopefully we can get back into the top 10. We've had two races in a row that have gone really rough towards the end, while Texas was just rough the whole time, so hopefully we can bounce back somehow at Richmond. So as always, if you guys did enjoy, make sure to comment, like, and subscribe. Those would all be very, very appreciated. So I will see you guys all in the next one. Thank you for all, uh, thank you all for watching, and have a great day, everybody.